Here we are, ingredient challenge number five. We had some really good stuff this week, beef carpaccio, herbs de Provence, and also scotch bonnet pepper sauce. We have a couple different things that are gonna go on today. We have the beef carpaccio, I'm using filet mignon, tip end of the filet. I have that in the freezer right now to set, that makes it easier to slice. That is going to be in there for a little bit. So I'm gonna get some other prep done for us right now. We're gonna serve it with homemade potato chips. I have Yukon Gold potatoes, slice them very thin. We're gonna put those in this bowl, fill it up with water, let the starch kind of seep out. The longer they sit, the crunchier the chip is gonna get. As much as you like a good crunch on your chips is how long you want it to be in there to remove a lot of that starch, so that way it just crisps up really nice when you get it in the fryer. Now just fill this with water. You can actually rinse it, dump it, and then refill again. Cover them up, and then just stick them in the fridge and let them soak for a while. These just go into the fridge till you get the rest of your prep done and you can fry them just right before you serve everything. Moving on to making an aioli. Basic things you need, oil, eggs, garlic, and then if you want to add any other flavoring to it, and we are going to use the scotch bonnet sauce in there. We're going to take a couple cloves of garlic and mince those up. You want to try to get this down to a paste, so it takes a little bit of time to do it. Make sure you use the side of the knife. Don't put your hand on the sharp part. Just smash them down. Mince. Take a little bit of salt and put that with the garlic. That's going to create a little bit of coarseness. And then you just work the garlic off of the board, push them down, using the salt to mash the garlic in, forming it into a garlic paste, so that way your aioli will be nice and smooth. Our secret ingredient is the scotch bonnet sauce, Dijon mustard, egg yolks, not the whole egg. Easy way to do that, crack the egg, use your fingers, let the white drain off, and goes the yolk. First thing you want to do before adding any oil is you want to incorporate all of this together. So once this is all blended together, that's when you're going to start adding in the oil. You have to go extremely slow and just let this whip and emulsify, and it basically will make your aioli. If you notice oil starting to pool, slow down on your oil because that means you're adding the oil in too fast, you're not whisking it in fast enough. So just slow down your oil, whisk it until it's all emulsified again, and then continue to add oil. On to the next uh, ingredient, we're going to be using the Herbs de Provence. It's going in the bottom here to season our oil and vinaigrette dressing. This is going to go over some dandelion greens that I picked up to put in the center of the beef carpaccio. Do a little bit of fresh lemon. One thing you can do to help get the juice out of the lemon when you're cutting it, press down and roll it on the counter. It releases it from the inside. Red wine vinegar, olive oil, cracked black pepper, and just whisk. Just let this sit aside, let those flavors come together, and it'll be great little dressing to go over the dandelion greens, and you can even drizzle a little bit of this all over the beef carpaccio itself on the plate. But to go with the beef carpaccio, usually use some kind of a green. Arugula goes really well with it. Watercress is really nice. I picked up some dandelion greens today. These are really great greens. They just give a really good flavor. They are a very big leaf. You can cut them down into bite size, just like you would for like any other salad. Just a really rough chop. It's just gonna look really nice on the plate. Herbs de Provence, vinaigrette that we made, we'll get tossed with this. Getting down to making the homemade potato chips. We have Yukon Gold potatoes, we slice thin, we let them soak a little while in the water. When you get them out of the water, you want to make sure you pat them dry, try to get as much surface water off of them as you can, because once they go into the oil, there's going to be a lot of spit and spatter and all that fun stuff. And right when they're coming out, you want to salt them. Do it in batches, don't overload your oils, that way it doesn't cool down too much. To move them around a little if they're layering on top of each other and stuff you want them to kind of throw freely they cook evenly so you're looking for that nice golden brown color and you can start pulling them out a little bit of salt some fresh glutton cracked pepper on there as well the first thing i did when i got back today from picking up this filet is i wrapped it and i made it into as tight of a circle as i could and it goes in the freezer for two hours that way when it's time to slice it, you're not dealing with a very loose piece of meat. The knife will be able to work its way through it and you'll be able to get thinner cuts. I have a nice big plate. This is great for presentation for beef carpaccio because it's very thin and you spread it out so it's not on top of each other and you dress it with everything else. It's been in the freezer along with the beef. When you slice the beef, you can set it on that and it's going to keep it cold for you. 
pieces of meat are about eighth to a quarter inch thick. Take a piece of the filet, goes down, cover that with the saran, flat side, not the teeth side, flat side. Start in the middle, down and out. Now it's nice and thin and flat. Lay that on the plate. It stays nice and chilled. And you're just gonna continue that through the rest of your beef. Have the beef carpaccio all plated up. I'm setting the aioli that we made with scotch bonnet sauce right in the middle. I'm gonna plate the homemade potato chips around that. You really just want a contrasting textures. Soft beef, crunchy potato chips, crunchy crusty bread, something along those lines. To add some more flavors to it, that's where we end up going with the bittery greens. I'll lightly dress this. Toss that up, just dress that around the plate. We're gonna finish it off with freshly sliced Parmesan. It's that shaved blend, dust everything with it. It's a very, very colorful platter. You have a nice white plate in the background. You have the red from the beef, you have the green. This is one of Sarah's nice favorite dishes. I'm gonna call her in now, have her give it a taste with me and see what she thinks. Sarah, come on in. Let's try up this beef carpaccio. Hey, yours is Fuller than mine. We have the pounded out filet mignon, homemade potato chips, dandelion green, shaved parmesan onion, Herbes de Provence, vinaigrette over the top. Of course, scotch bonnet aioli. I'm super excited about this. So what I would do, grab a chip, slide off some of that beef. It's gonna pull apart very easily. And then if you want, you can dip it right into the aioli. Get a little bit of the green and onion on there. A little bit of it all. Mm. So good. Yeah, money. Okay. <laughs> I got goosebump stuff going. I got goosebump stuff going. Wow. Thank you for these ingredients. Yeah, these ingredients were money, guys. Awesome. So far, one of my favorites. Very, very awesome. good. Awesome. I'm gonna have another one. Cheers. Salud.